Hello, and welcome to Battle Ready with Missy Armstrong. We are going to prepare ourselves for battle by learning about the characters in the Bible, learning about their victories and their defeats. Thank you so much for listening, and I hope you enjoy the podcast. Hello and welcome. My name is Missy Armstrong, and if it's your first time here, hi. We're so happy that you're listening, and we hope you get a lot out of the lesson today. If this is not your first time, welcome. Hi. I'm so happy that you are all here today. We are starting a study in Joshua, or about Joshua, actually, but... Um, We finished Moses the other day, and I say finished loosely because Moses is so huge that we just had to stop after seven episodes, but we are now starting with Joshua, and we will be starting in the book of Joshua at chapter one. Uh, Should be pretty easy, (laughs) right? Joshua one. So, Here we go. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord, the Lord said unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses is aid. Moses, my servant is dead. Now then you and all of these people get ready to cross the Jordan River into the land I'm about to give them to the Israelites. I will give give you every place where you set your foot, as I promised Moses. Your territory will extend from the desert of Lebanon and from the great river Euphrates, all the Hittite country, the Mediterranean Sea, in the west. So no one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and courageous, because you will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to their ancestors to give them. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all of the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it in the right or to the left. You may that you may be successful in whatever you do or wherever you go. Keep this book of law always on your lips, meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. I have not commanded have I not commanded you. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. So Joshua ordered the officers of the people, Go through the camp and tell the people, Get your provisions ready. Three days from now we will cross the Jordan River here to go and to take the possession of the land the Lord your God is giving you as your own. But to the Reubenites and the Gat, the Gadites and the half tribe of Manasseh, Joshua said, "Remember the command that Moses, the servant of the Lord, gave you after he said, "The Lord your God will give you rest by giving you this land. Your wives, your children, your livestock may stay in the land that Moses gave you east of the Jordan. All of your fighting men ready for battle they must cross over ahead of the fellow israelites you are to help them until the lord gives you gives them rest as he had done for you until they they too have taken possession of the land the lord your god is giving them after that you may go back and occupy your own land which the which Moses, the servant of the Lord, gave you in the east of Jordan towards the sunrise. And they answered Joshua, Whatever you have commanded us, we will do, and wherever you send us, we will go. 
Just as we fully obeyed Moses, so will we obey you. Only may the Lord your God be with you as he was with Moses. Whoever rebels against the word and does not obey it, whenever you may command them, we will be put to de- we will be put to death. Only be strong and courageous. Now, like we don't know a lot about Joshua from the beginning. He's the son of Nun, and that's not N O N E. It's N U N, uh, which implies that Nun was a name. <laughs> uh, but he is the one that Moses took with him. Moses kind of fed into him, discipled him kind of showed him what to do and he is also the one that Moses asked God to make the next leader and we know that he was born that Joshua was born in Goshen which is part of Egypt which is the part of Egypt that uh, when Jacob uh, or when Joseph sent his family to take care of the flocks and the sheep and things for Pharaoh he sent them to Goshen and that's where they lived and took care of all of the livestock of the Egyptians or of the Pharaoh actually but so he is he's from Goshen he is an Israelite he was the son of Nun an Ephraimite Ephraimite, which uh, of course is the descendants of Ephraim. He was the 12th generation from Joseph and he was about 40 years old at the time of Exodus. So uh, he is like said many times the servant of Moses or the follower of Moses because he did help Moses he did serve Moses as much as he could when Moses was alive and he did become the one that Moses appointed after death for God to lead his children out of Israel into the promised land and into the land that God had been promising since Abraham I mean, this is many generations later. This is like hundreds of years later. But he is finally going to take them to the promised land. And in God's call to Joshua and his commission to Joshua, in the way that God speaks to Joshua to tell him this is what he's supposed to do, God gives him a two promises he promises that they will possess the land of Canaan and he promises that God will be with him and never forsake him as long as he keeps the laws that Moses has put forward and the Lord directs him in various ways here one of the main things that is repeated over and over is be strong and courageous right you heard it in there like at least three or four times be strong and courageous and you have to remember Joshua and Caleb were the ones that when they got to the land of Canaan the first time and they sent in the spies Joshua and Caleb were the only ones that said, yeah, we can do this. God's got this. The rest of the other uh, 10 spies, because there was 12 of them, the rest of them were like, no, oh, there are giants over there. There is a bunch of scary stuff over there. We we can't do this. We're going to die. Right? But Joshua and Caleb were the only ones that had the faith. And God knew when Joshua was taking this spot, God knew there are going to be some pretty scary things in Joshua's future. 
there are going to be some times when he may not be strong or courageous uh when he might waver a little bit i mean you think about the things that he faced i mean just one okay the the battle of jericho right jericho is this big city with these huge walls and an army inside and joshua was going to need that strength that courageousness he was going to need to be reminded god is with you right he had strong faith and he was a very faithful servant to the lord in every way that he could be but god keeps reminding him be strong and courageous be strong and courageous right so many times in my life have i met people that were not very strong or courageous right they were great christians don't get me wrong good christian people but very not strong (laughs) or courageous like very scared scared of praying in public scared of just being in front of people and you just have to look at it and be like god said i'm gonna be with you don't be don't be scared be strong be courageous so this reminds me of a verse in Timothy uh let me see. I don't want to give you the wrong location. I always confuse it. Like I get First Timothy and uh, Second Timothy mixed up, so I'm looking it up real quick. But uh, it is Second Timothy one seven, and it says, "For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, and of love, and of sound mind." And I have to over and over again sometimes to myself and to others reinforce that God didn't give us a spirit of fear God gave us a spirit of power of love and of sound mind my husband is one of those people uh or like probably 10 11 years ago maybe even a little further back than that uh he was terrified of speaking in front of people he was terrified of praying in front of people he was just i mean the guy walked out of a speech class in in college and never went back because he could not do that and i kept telling him like god didn't give you a spirit of fear and i will tell you that we have we have worked with the theater the theater arts and the drama thing in a church we went to previously to the church we have now and we have done some theater there as well and we've done some theater in our community theater and uh, another local theater which did some plays that I had written and Daniel my husband is hilarious he is he has such comic timing comedic timing and he has he is just funny and he like the way he broke through that was one day we were supposed to do a skit a 15 minute skit or so for our church and one of the kids didn't show up to do it and he had to do it because there was nobody else and there was no one else there to do it and it needed to be a boy I couldn't do it uh it needed to be a male person and he did it he, I thought he was going to have a heart attack. He was turning red. He was, <laughs> but he did it. And then he just found his own. Like over time with me, keep telling him about the second Timothy verse and not to have a spirit of fear and realizing that God has his back. He has done so much and he is hilarious when he is in a comedic role i just have to say but him 
few years ago, less than 20 years ago, would not even pray in front of people or, you know, he might take the offering, but he would, he didn't want to pray over the offering. And now he is teaching. He is, he'll pray. He'll, he does all kinds of things, speaking in front of people and stuff that he could not do before because he had to get over that spirit of fear. And a few years ago, I was doing a ladies, working on a ladies retreat and, uh, the theme was fearless and when I was studying it and I was working on like the Bible studies and stuff that we were going to be doing I come across this thought in my head I guess God just give it to me but it said when your fear starts your faith ends so when you start fearing that's where you need to build your faith God has control he always has if you give it to him he will take it he knows what's happening in your life he wants a relationship with you he wants to know what you feel about what's happening in your life he wants to know you and to to get rid of that fear you have to build that relationship with Christ. Build that relationship with God. Talk to him about it. Put it in his hands. And I don't mean put it in his hands. Walk away and worry about it for the rest of the day. No. Put it in his hands. And walk away and say God has control. There are certain things that you can do in life. And we do have free will. Don't get me wrong. We do have free will. But when you put your your situation in God's hands and know that he has the best, the, the best intentions, the best plan for you, and you stay the track, and you don't take it out of his hands, you leave it there, that is where your faith starts. There are some times that you need to step out on faith yes absolutely but don't continue to worry about situations that you have said God take this you're just wasting your own time if God has it the devil might try to mess with you the devil might try to distract you the devil might try to derail you but God has it God has taken it and he will control if you let him. And so don't be afraid. You died, God did not give us a spirit of fear. But just like he told Joshua here. Be strong and courageous. And courage isn't fearlessness. Okay. Courage is standing up in the face of fear. It's acting even though you are terrified. So, like, be strong and courageous. Continue to act the way that God wants you to. Continue to lead down the roads that God wants you to lead down. Because you're strong and courageous. So, the Lord directs, directs Joshua in Joshua 1.8 to the secret of Joshua's success right and that is meditation meditation in God's word it is more than it is more important than any other single thing that Joshua could do as a leader and it is exactly what pushed Joshua forward gave Joshua foundation was meditation on the word of God and I don't normally talk about this but I do have a book out there and it's just about my journey of how how I dealt with issues that I had in the past and how I dealt with what I called battle scars and how I made them beauty marks well I didn't make them beauty marks but how God helps me to see them through 
what he sees and uh part of that process is what meditation on the word what i like to call marination if you're a cooking person if you cook with meat or i don't know maybe you can do this with other things but uh i i love to marinate meat okay whatever kind of meat it is i like to marinate it in different things because a marination can seep into that meat and it can tenderize it it can make it sweet or it can <coughs> add a kick of spice or it can just give it a whole other taste that you never expected and this is what happens when we meditate on the word when you marinate something you put it in a container usually a ziploc bag or something with the marination liquid and you let it sit when you meditate on the word you need to surround yourself in the word you need to read it you need to study it you need to read over it you need to pray about it and you need to think about that that verse or that set of scriptures over and over and over again all throughout the day just let it pour over you and sit in it marinate in that word because then it seeks in it starts to change the way you are on the inside it starts to make you help you to see God's will in your life help you to see what God has in store for you and just help you to see that there is hope just like the marination of a meat when the liquid or the rub seeps into that and it changes the way it tastes or the tenderness of it that is exactly what God's word does to you so you probably know how to read the Bible right how to study the Bible even you may even know how to to memorize a lot of the Bible but do you really meditate in it like I looked it up and it said and I found a little study that said that one in 10,000 Christians do not or understand one in 10,000 Christians understand the practice and principles of meditating in the word this means it's read on it pray on it study it revisit it over and over again to immerse yourself in it one in ten thousand don't understand how to do this that's astonishing to me so one in ten thousand people ten thousand christians not counting on christians just one in ten thousand christians really understand the practice of meditating on the word of God so many people are missing out on so many promises so so much peace so much direction because they're not meditating on the word of God and this also reminds me of another verse in Timothy this time in first Timothy 415 it says be diligent in these matters give yourselves wholly to them so that everyone may see your progress be diligent and give yourself over to the meditation over to the complete immersion of yourself into this into the word of God don't just read a chapter and walk away think about it study on it really let it just envelop you so that's where we're going to stop today i want to thank all of you for listening and uh we will continue with joshua next week remember to be strong and courageous god's with you he's got your back and so just continue studying the word marinating in it meditating on it and remember to be kind to yourself and others and to smile because God loves you and so do I